Hi everyone, my name is Lucy and this is Memory Keep Journals. Today we're going to be working on this beautiful journal that I created. It's an accordion journal with this uh, prompt list from the Femaremba, coordinated by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and Louisa Heinzel. This journal was actually inspired by Meg Journals. Last year, I participated in her junk journal July that she always has every year. And I learned from her videos how to create an accordion journal with scraps. And last year's journal was actually made with all kinds of scraps that I had available on my desk. This year, I decided to use all of my paper bags that I had available because I have so many of them and decided to cover the pages with coffee dyed paper that I made to make the pages look clean and um, cohesive. If you guys want to learn how to create an accordion journal, I suggest you going over to Meg Journal's channel. She has a few videos on how to create it with different types of papers and so many ideas that will inspire you to create your own. I tried to create my own video to show you how I did mine, but unfortunately my video did not save properly so I was not able to upload it. So if you guys have never done that, I suggest you do it. I mean, it is, it is amazing the things that you can actually do. You would be surprised of the things that you would do because you want to think about it at the moment. But when you enter a challenge, you tend to think outside the box a lot more than you would if you were doing it on your own. I covered it with uh, book pages and also with my coffee dye paper like you see here. I created these coffee dye paper or I dyed these um, regular uh, copy papers with coffee and I used them to cover the pages of the bag and it makes it look so pretty. And then the front cover and back cover is antique papers that was given to me by my friend Joya as well. And I just decided to decorate the book covers with it the book covers are really strong I actually used um, uh, cereal boxes to create the book board I have some videos like that that shows about the book board so I'm gonna link it below on my description box in case you guys are interested in watching it it is available for you below my friend Joya is also going to be participating in this and between the both of us, we decided that at the end of the uh, Defemaremba, we were going to trade our journals with each other. So now it's going to be in another level because I am going to work um, in this journal, like if it's for myself, yes, but because I know she's going to have it, I'm probably going to do a lot more. But these challenges are fun because it makes you think outside the box. And I actually surprised myself with things that I have done that I never thought that I would do so and plus we can also work on things that we have never used before or improvise if we don't have some type of an item that they are using in their videos so that helps a lot to inspire you to create more so now I have all these cards they're ready and I'm gonna put them aside and have them ready for when I want to use them if I use them all I might not but for sure the butterfly is cute the turtle i would probably use and the seahorse 
and of course the bear which is the one that I'm going to be using now because it's my favorite animal so that inspired me for me to use it so for now I'm gonna put it in here in the pocket and um, we're gonna start working on the first prompt which is fluff and mason jar and I believe I have mason jars somewhere so I'm gonna have to look for it but in the meantime I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way and begin working on the bear and I decided that I'd rather just um, fussy cut it just so that I can use it and we'll see how I will use it and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet or what I'm gonna be creating so we'll see what comes up after this and decided to keep the name as well it says bear and it's also talking about 49 dragonflies so I may use it somewhere in the in the book but here I have the mason jars. These mason jars are from a subscription that I have with Donna from Junk Journal Ideas from Donna. And I don't think I have the subscription anymore, but here I'm trying to figure out which pens I want to use. Like um, neon or any others. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these mason jars on the inside because I'm thinking that I want to create like shakers with it don't know why but I just felt like I need to do shakers with it so I usually use my craft knife or the box cutter to do this instead of the scissors it's just easier on my hands so I use both most of the time here I have some of these, um, what are these called? Sequins, yeah, that's what it is. And I'm using one of these plastic, sorry, that was my dog, but I'm going to be using some of these plastic bags that I got from one of the purchases that I had. And I'm going to see how this is going to work. So I'm trying to figure out in here how I'm going to do it, but you will see in a moment that I got some kind of an idea in which I can measure it in a way that I can sew it and it worked out perfectly so just keep watching so you can see how I get to do it and it worked out pretty good so once I took out the inside and made it into like a little window I made sure that it was completely cut on the outside as well but I left enough space that when I glue it together I have enough of the um the cardstock for it to adhere to the plastic and the other um, mason jar so there I am putting it together and inside of the bag like I mentioned before and I'm gonna measure it and then go ahead and sew it around it so that I can add the sequence inside of it and I will show you in a second like this so here it is sewn now I'm gonna glue the mason jars on it And at this point, I was just hoping that it actually works and that it actually adheres really well so that it doesn't come off. And you will see that it actually did work. And it looks pretty cute. I think you guys are gonna love this. I didn't think it was gonna be easy, but it really was. Now I glue it all together. Then once everything is glued, what I'm going to do is sew on the bottom of the jar. Like the, the I think it's the, the cover of the jar. I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to cut out the excess plastic all around. And it's easy to do that because it's already sewn, so the sewn part is covered by the jar. So here I can actually get rid of the corner ones. And then once everything is adhered really well, you can actually open it up and add the sequins inside. And so I decided this time around that I was only going to use the yellow one to make it. <laughs> if you guys would know what it is that I'm thinking about right now. 
actually I was thinking of honey so <laughs> when I say bear I also think about my daughter when she was little she always loved Winnie the Pooh and Winnie the Pooh loves honey so that's what I was thinking so now the jars is actually it's gonna have honey and I'm gonna give it to my bear <laughs> I know it's silly but and it's all I could think about at the moment so here we go I just fill it all up and now I will show you what I'm gonna do on the top of it and I think I create two jars but I only get to use one So you guys, I love my subscriptions because I get all these freebies that I can use um, to practice or to create anything that I would like. And these mason jars have been really heaven sent. And look how cute they come out after I sewed around it. So you see it has all the sequins inside and it is completely closed. Once you see this is open right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew right there on the bottom and then I can get rid of all the excess of the plastic later. So I will show you here. There you go. See, so now I'll take all the excess uh, strings and then I can cut the plastic with no problem. And none of the sequin is going to come out because it's already sewn in that specific spot. How cool is that? So now I'll clean it up and have it all ready. And now I'm going to have to figure out how it is that I'm going to do it. I'm thinking of creating a card. So at the moment as I'm cutting this excess plastic, I think that I might just use one. I'm not sure or both of them, but we'll see. But I know for a fact that I only used one. I tried, I tr you know, I tried using this. What is that called? I bought it in Michaels. It's like copper. And it's like these little pieces of paper so I figure you can glue it with some of the the um, glue stick and put it on there but I have never used it before so I've seen it on videos but it's really weird I'm not sure how this works and I just didn't like it so I kept rubbing it off and decided that instead I was gonna use one of my uh, markers that are like gold or I have a copper and a gold, but I decided to use the gold one. So yeah, there I was like, okay, I can't use that. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just try it and see how it works. And if it doesn't, it's like aluminum paper, but I don't remember what it's called. If you guys know what it is, let me know in the description box what it is. I don't remember what it's called. But it was kind of difficult to use so you see it was like messy i didn't like it so i decided to use the marker instead so i have a gold and a copper i think i started using the gold one and put that thing away <laughs> i said maybe next time when i learn how to use it <laughs> so that would be one of the things that i would really need to learn and look up into how to play with that so it looks a lot better with the marker. So I really love the way those things came out. I love it. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of the white around the edges of the bear and the mason jars, just so that you don't see that. And I'm also going to go around that card where it says bear and all that, but I'll do it eventually later on. Okay, so now we go back into the book and I'm going to be using the first two pages because I want to create something on one side of the page and then the other side I want to leave it for her to be able to write on. I love to write in my journal so I usually like to have enough space to write. 
here I have some of these little scrap papers that I bought from um, Brazil Paper Cottage. I love all of her papers. And they have some yellow in there and some of those great patina old vintage papers, maybe antique. That one, it was the very, very delicate paper, book pages, ledgers. I just love it. So I took a few of them out and I decided that's what I'm going to be working on. So here I am figuring out, okay, now I have an idea of what I want to do. So just keep on watching so you can see what I mean. In the meantime, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, some of the journals that I actually have in my Etsy shop. I have two of them right now. One is a soft cover and the other one is a hard cover journal. I should be adding a few more journals soon before Christmas. And so I want you to have a look at it and see if you like any of them or if you are interested, just let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be um, putting some videos up soon and I'm also going to be doing some flip throughs of some other journals that I'm working on and I wouldn't want you to miss those as well. And if you guys are also interested in seeing how I construct a accordion journal, please let me know in the description box if you would like to see it. I will be more than happy to video and a tutorial on how I created my journal as well. So here I decided to create a tree and this was an inspiration that I had from one of my bullet journals that I had for two years ago where I drew a tree trunk and I added some stickers of leaves for the fall and I believe I was doing it for the month of November or October I can't remember but I had showed it to my friend Joya in one of our conversations we had on the phone and it stayed in my head like I wanted to recreate that again. And you see this little piece of um, vellum that I'm adding in there with some uh, like watercolor drawings. That is from Martina at Teal and Tottered. Her sister actually drew that in a watercolor drawing and she added it into one of the digitals. I printed it in a vellum uh, paper and it came out so nice. I used it in some of the little notebooks that I created for gifts for um, the clients that actually buy my journals and I added into their um, uh, uh, purchases as a gift with some other surprises. So here I was trying to work the rule of three like I learned with Barbara about using a color in the page where you put uh, like a triangle kind of way so um, I decided okay I'm gonna use yellow but in the meantime I started to use some of these markers they were not working so I ended up using my watercolor pencils and so I drew all over it and I then uh, used my water pen to just uh, mix it all together and then use some of my mixed media um, exa, uh, what is it called? The um, oxide spray. I think I used a vintage photo one and some of the uh, walnut color I think I have or oxide but it comes out really nice. This, this is a simulation of a tree trunk. It's kind of messy because I was just doing it pretty quickly and just had an idea and I was hoping it was going to come out. I wasn't sure if I was going to use the whole thing, but then once I started using the oxide, it came out exactly how I wanted it to look. <laughs> and you'll see in a moment. These watercolor pencils I got at Walmart. And they actually work really good. I just have to sharpen them a little bit more, but they work really well.
And guys, I really do love drawing. I could actually look at a picture and draw it. It doesn't come out automatically from my own head um, because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a draw. I do not draw, but I love to color. But I can um, replicate it. Look how cool once I added the oxide. And I'm in patience. I wasn't going to wait for it. So I had to take my um, heat tool and just dry it off as soon as possible. <laughs> I just wanted it to be done. And it dried it pretty quickly. And this is um, up to the extent of what I used in oxide and things like that. So I've been learning a lot with Louisa Heinzel as well. Because she's got so many cool ideas. But I still have to... Um, improvise as much as possible because I don't have that many items that she has or some of those oxides and the colors so I just do my best with what I have and here I am trying to put it all together and so I decide to use double-sided tape because it's the best way to be able to glue vellum to paper and it won't ruin it I used that whole drawing that Martina had in one of the um, digitals I'm actually subscribed to her patreon as well so I get a lot of the digitals that she creates every month and I love it look how cool that looks so now I have to figure out how to add a tag or or a journaling card in there and I believe I created a tag I created a tag So now I decided that I wanted to just do some of that oxide all over the page like if it was wind and it was going to um, make the leaves like fall. You know how it's always windy and the leaves are flying all over the place and the blue is for the sky and just not trying to do a drawing but just give it a simulation of it. And here it is. And maybe I should have cut out a little bit more the, the vellum just to make it a little bit not so straight <laughs> line, but it's okay. I just left it that way. It's, well, I was really looking into what else I was going to add on there. So here I'm creating the journaling card or the tag. I think I ended up creating a tag. So this is a card stock and now I'm using some of the um, vintage papers that I got from Roselle Paper Cottage and I'm going to create some kind of a collage on it with these papers. I'm trying to incorporate the yellow like I mentioned to you before, I'm trying the rule of three. So that's what I'm thinking. Already the page has the brown and the blue which I will be incorporating a lot in this journal and this paper isn't this gorgeous it's old I think it's from 18 or 19 57 or 37 I can't remember I can't see it from here as I am doing the voiceover but you will see it in some of the pictures that I'm going to be posting on my Instagram after the video. Or during the video. I think I post it at the same time. Now the back, I'm going to be using Rose Hill Paper Cottage handmade paper. 
with gold speckles on it. I love this paper and I've had it for a while now and I have been stretching it as much as I can because every time she puts it on sale in this in her Etsy shop I always get to miss it. Either I get busy or I forget the time. I just don't know. I can never get into it. I do buy a lot of her papers as well that are um, embossed. And here, this is my scrap box. So I take any little piece of paper that I have in there that I can use for collaging. Definitely get it from my scrap box. I don't waste any of the paper. I use them all. And then I have forgotten to distress it. So now I'm adding the distress. <laughs> this vintage photo, what I'm using. And then I'll do it all around the card as well. And usually what I like to do is use my um, tag that I bought from Sizzix. And it's the team, Tim Holtz tags from Sizzix. And then I just take the little tips off from there so that it's even. Then I do the same thing with the watercolor paper. And then what I do is I sew around the card first before I glue it to the handmade paper so that you don't see the stitching in the back. Sometimes I forget and I do it all together. But, and this time around I did it. And then, because we needed to use fluff, I figured this is like the only fluffy thing I have. And it's these strings that I bought on Etsy shop. And I might add the Etsy shop below in the description box where I got that from. I don't remember at the moment as I'm doing the voiceover, but I make sure that I'll add it below. Then later on, I found out that I had some other fluffy a string and I'm not sure what it's called but I had bought it for my Christmas journal and I said wait a minute I could use it it has some sparkly stuff on it so I also added later on into the mason jar so that it has the fluff that the prompt list is asking us to do So here I am trying to audition how I'm going to set up the tag. And I added that little piece of the card that says bear. Distressed it. So this is what I was thinking, just adding that tag inside of the tree. And you can pull it out and write behind it. But that's basically what I was thinking. Very simple. Now I'm adding some of this um, cheesecloth. So I use my wet glue. And if I put enough on the bear, it actually makes the cheesecloth get adhere to the card as well. And once everything dries, I'll take it to the machine. I'll do the stitching all around it. And then I'll glue it to the um, handmade paper. It's neater that way so you don't see the stitching in the back. But I tell you guys, I don't know why, but I forget sometimes and I just do it after the fact. And it's okay too. It's a junk journal, so it doesn't matter. Anything goes. So now we're just going to go ahead and start adding it to the page. And here are my leaf stickers. These I also purchased at Walmart. They're pretty cheap, so it's okay. 
they're really pretty I don't like anything stickers so this is what I have and I'm improvising so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna add an eyelet to this And then I'm going to um, add the mason jar on top as well with uh, twine. And that's it guys. After I add all this and tie it up and everything and put it in there, it's perfect. And it's ready for her to be able to write in the back of the tag or even take the tag out and write all over the page as well and it will look amazing and I had so much fun creating this see this is the little fluff that I was telling you about <laughs> and I finally found it and I added after the fact so yeah guys if anything go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you guys can see the next video that I'm going to be posting um, this is definitely December daily day one and I should be adding day two um, tomorrow. I really appreciate you all guys how I'm watching my videos and those of you who are new you're welcome to be here on my channel. I appreciate you and uh, if you have any questions just let me know. And be on the lookout for um, my new journals that I'm going to be doing a flip through very soon and hope you guys like it this came out so cute the only thing is that little branch there was giving me such a hard time I didn't really think about it Here's when I'm adding all of the leaves and trying to make sure to spread out where the yellow is, like a triangle. And here it is, guys. This is my page. What do you think? Let me know what you think, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in my next video. How cute. Here it is. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute with the little mason jar. Just put a little bit of glue here to hold it so it doesn't come off. Oh, here I was trying to add that in there and then it got stuck and I had to pull it out a little bit just so I can add the card but it worked it's all good all right guys I'll see you tomorrow in the next video